CBS News. This is Charles Osgood. During the current mission of Space Shuttle Columbia, if the reason neither of the $2 million spacesuits brought along for the job is functioning properly. As astronaut Bill Lenore informed Mission Control from space, the problem with one of the suits was a faulty ventilation fan. We ran the fan, uh, as you said, with the helmet on the nose that flow port from the SCU, and it ran for about 40 to 50 minutes. Then the fan started to get a little A bad oxygen regulator made the other suit unusable. The walk in space was originally supposed to take place yesterday, but Lenore wasn't feeling well. The astronauts are scheduled to return to Earth tomorrow. Monday morning it was for the Space Shuttle Columbia crew, mission number five, starting at about three o'clock this morning. The problems with the Hamilton Standard $2 million spacesuits began. First, it was Joe Allen's suit. The problem there, apparently in the back, apparently a motor fan that simply wasn't working. It's a fan that's given the folks here, when they were testing the fan, some problem down on the ground, and apparently it's gone to fritz again. Then they turned to Bill Lenore's suit. Lenore's suit just didn't get up enough pressure, just a little bit short of what they really wanted to have in order to take a chance of sending him out alone. Right now, as I speak to you, shuttle program manager Glenn Lunny is talking to the other reporters in the building across the hall here. And one of the things they're considering is taking another look at the suits. In the next two hours or so, they're going to be working on the ground, working with the crew, and in Lunny's words, trying to find someone who can come up with a bright idea that perhaps may explain what was wrong with the suits. Now, if they can get that fixed in the next two or three hours, Lunny says that a spacewalk and a mission extension is still possible. I do not want to pull out to you something that's very likely at this point. My own opinion is that it is not too likely that uh, we will not find anything that will give us the confidence to uh, go ahead. But NASA's not giving up yet, but it's not looking very good at this point. If the decision is made not to do it after all, then they'll start packing up, getting ready for the trip home tomorrow. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Wayne Dolcefino, KTRH News. Astronauts has been scrapped. KTRH's Wayne Dolcefino explains why in this live report from Johnson Space Center. Joe Allen's spacesuit was the first to go on the frith, the culprit of fan motor regulating oxygen flow. There was some talk Bill Lenore could do it alone, not really a spacewalk, but a virtual space peak just to make sure the suit even worked. But Lenore's pressure in his suit wasn't high enough. But he was very admirable trying to defy fate at the very last minute. Hey, Bob, if I press my head over to the very far left of my helmet, I can get the gauge up to 3.9, would that matter? Good try, Bill. To the top of the gauge. Good try, but no cigar. But NASA's not giving up yet. Project Shuttle boss Glenn Lunny's talking to reporters right now, and he says there is still some hope. We're going to spend a couple hours trying to uh, see whether there's any other bright ideas that anybody has. If anybody does have any bright ideas, the mission could be extended one day and the spacewalk conducted tomorrow, but it's not very likely. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Wayne Dolcefino, KTRH News. They cost two million dollars apiece, and they didn't work. Because of spacesuit problems, the space walk into the cargo bay of the shuttle Columbia has been canceled. Or, as Reed Collins reports from Houston, all but canceled. Engineers at the Space Center are trying to come up with suggestions that might solve problems in the spacesuits and allow some sort of space walk yet, but nobody is enthusiastic. The fan that moves oxygen in Joe Allen's suit is malfunctioning, and the pressure regulator in Bill Lenore's is not putting enough pressure in his suit. Shuttle program manager Glenn Lunny says they'll troubleshoot the problems for a couple more hours, but he's not optimistic. Well, we deployed those two satellites, and I sure would like to have seen the spacewalk go well, and we are obviously disappointed, but uh, we still feel very good about this flight, uh, and uh, we'll be right back. It's believed the suits will be folded for future analysis, and preparations will get underway for Columbia's landing tomorrow. Reed Collins, CBS News at the Johnson Space Center. CBS News, this is Frank Setapani. The presidency has canceled today's scheduled space walk by two of the Columbia shuttle astronauts because of problems with their $2 million space suits. William Lenore, whose suit was plagued by low pressure, spoke to Mission Control in Houston about the problem in Joseph Allen's suit, the faulty oxygen fan. Can we go 
got a problem with Joe's fan. We got to the point where we both got helmets on. I got my fan on and up and running. Joe's fan was on and running in SCU, and then it suddenly quit. Mission Director Glenn Lunny sees only a remote chance of extending the mission one day to get the spacewalk in. He says an equipment malfunction during the spacewalk, or EVA, could be overcome. These two things occurred with the people outside that uh, we think that there is adequate provision in the system to uh, get them returned to the cabin and pressurized, etc. So the failures that we had or the problems that we had, we were not dealing with uh, again, what would have been an immediate uh, flight safety or personal safety issue if the men had been outside. Unless there are any changes, the shuttle mission is still scheduled to conclude tomorrow. NBC News. This is Cameron Swayze reporting. It is disappointed at the failure on board the space shuttle Columbia. Because of problems with those new $2 million space suits, the astronauts had to cancel a space walk scheduled for today. The word is there is almost no chance they can salvage the walk, and the mission of Columbia will end as scheduled tomorrow. On KTRH Houston, CBS News, this is Frank Sebepani. The flight of the Space Shuttle Columbia will end tomorrow on schedule. The spacewalk that officials hope to conduct tomorrow after faulty equipment prevented it today is officially off. Reed Collins reports from Mission Control in Houston. After several hours of tinkering with two faulty spacesuits, the Columbia crew gave up and admitted defeat. A fan in one of them doesn't work properly, and the pressure regulator in the other doesn't pressurize enough. So the spacewalk, or even an abbreviated one, is off for this mission. A short time ago, they began the process of repacking all their gear. We're in the process of up. Okay, pack it up neat. In about three and a half hours, the Columbia crew will go to sleep to be mentally sharp for tomorrow morning's re-entry and landing at Edwards Air Force Base. Reed Collins, CBS News at the Johnson Space Center. description. First, there was the fan motor in Joe Allen's suit. It was noisy and too slow to provide enough cooling and oxygen. Joe was getting hot, so we're in the process right now of getting him out of his suit. The pan, the uh, lower torso was off, and he's struggling to get out of the hut. With one suit out of commission, the next suggestion from Bill Lenore was really expected. You might anticipate a suggestion for a short solo. It was a noisy idea and also a risky one, but Mission Control decided to try and see if it would work. But in the end, Lenore's suit wouldn't make the pressure. I've got some bad news for you. Uh, we're going to have to terminate the EVA prep. There was one more try to fix the suits, but about 11.30 this morning, the expected results were announced. This mission will not be extended, and the plan is to land at the nominal time at Edwards Air Force Base tomorrow. This is Doug Miller. The question now is how the spacesuit failure today will affect the future of America's space shuttle program. The shuttle project manager, Glenn Lunny, says it will not. But we will, of course, intend to go forward with all the operational plans for the upcoming flights. It doesn't inhibit any of those. The spacesuit uh, is supposed to be used on later shuttle flights to test a new rocket-powered maneuvering unit and to repair a broken satellite. It's possible today's spacewalk will be rescheduled for another flight. But so far, no decision on that. NASA is too busy preparing for the shuttle landing scheduled for 8.32 tomorrow morning to be carried live on KTRH. At the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. A fire inside NASA's Mission Control Building has been traced to an area of a splice between some aluminum and copper wire. Houston Fire Marshal Eddie Corral suspects those connections are unsafe. PBS News, this is Dick Reed. Lands in California's Edwards Air Force Base shortly after 6.30 Pacific time tomorrow morning. That will end a flight that started well with the successful delivery of two communication satellites into orbit, but is ending with a stumble. The failure of expensive spacesuits that prevented two of the four-man crew from venturing outside today. Dick Reeves, CBS News.
Wes, a few final hours of sleep for the crew of Columbia this evening, leading into the last big event of this space shuttle mission, the landing, scheduled for tomorrow morning. KTRH's Doug Miller at Johnson Space Center has this live report. With a spacewalk canceled, the crew of Columbia spent most of this day stowing things away for tomorrow's return to Earth. Just before Columbia signed off for a night's sleep, capsule communicator Mike Coates uh, did the best thing he could toward tucking the crew in. He offered a few words of consolation. Sure proud of the job you guys been doing up there. Uh, it's a good flight when the worst thing you have to worry about is the missing coffee and the missing sponge. Uh, we're sorry about the EVA problems today, but uh, you sure had an excellent flight uh, except for that. So you have a good uh, entry and landing tomorrow. We'll be looking forward to seeing you. Well, the crew is scheduled to wake up at 11.30 tonight to prepare for the trip home. They had hoped to test the shuttle's response to crosswinds during landing, but nature was not complying with them out there at Edwards Air Force Base. Nonetheless, conditions are reported good. Here on KTRH. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Doug Miller, KTRH News. To go. That's what happened to the Columbia Space Shuttle astronauts when their spacewalk was canceled because their spacesuits malfunctioned. The crew comes home tomorrow after an otherwise successful journey. CBS News, this is Rob Armstrong. Columbia will be awakened in just under two hours. The crew will then begin its final preparations for the return to Earth. Shuttle director John Cox said the mission has been a success despite a disappointment early today when both spacesuits, which would have been used in the first shuttle spacewalk, failed to function properly. The spacewalk was scrubbed. The I'm Carol Pazewski. Good morning, Columbia, Houston. Time to get up and brush your teeth and uh, take a shower. We want you to come back home today. It's touchdown day for Columbia's shuttle astronauts as the four-man crew awoke and made plans for landing this morning in the desert, 60 miles from Los Angeles. Earlier, it was letdown day with the cancellation of the long-awaited spacewalk. NASA says there was trouble with the $2 million spacesuits, but the $250 million mission proved the ship can launch satellites. And that was considered the most important function of the five-day space trip. Thousands of people are awaiting the touchdown near Edwards Air Force Base in the cool desert air. Landing conditions are good with scattered clouds and headwinds of nine miles an hour. The Columbia will be modified at the Kennedy Space Center for launch next October when it's expected to carry a big European-built laboratory module called Space Lab and a six-man crew. More in a minute. Today, for what previous astronauts have described as the big toboggan ride, the deorbit burn, fiery re-entry into the atmosphere, and the landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The instructions started going up in the past few hours. Soon the crew will be closing the big payload bay doors and making final checks before re-entry. The landing will come on a concrete runway at 834 Houston time this morning. The dry lake bed NASA wanted to land on is out of commission because of last week's rains. Once Columbia is on the ground, it gets a fix-up job. The shuttle Challenger is slated for the next trip upstairs in late January. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Wayne Dolcefino, KTRH News. CBS News, I'm David Jackson. Fighting flare coming down, shuttle mission five, a bit incomplete, the spacewalk scrapped. Touchdown in California due in three and a half hours, and Capcom John McBride reminded the shuttlers They'll be home in Houston a few hours after that. And once again, we certainly have enjoyed working with you, and we'll see you back in town this evening. Thanks so much, sir. From ABC News, I'm Breck Artery. The shuttle astronauts are preparing to land later this morning. At the Johnson Space Center in Houston, ABC's John Lyons reports. Columbia's final day in orbit started with a little traveling music, John Denver in space. 
Good morning, Columbia, Houston. Time to get up and brush your teeth and uh, take a shower. We want you to come back home today. The payload bay doors are closed and latched, the last major critical event before they start back. Weather at Edwards Air Force Base, perfect for landing. John Lyons, ABC News, Johnson Space Center, Houston. ABC News coverage of the shuttle landing starts at 9.21 a.m. Eastern Time. Now this. Computers are now programmed for entry into the gravity of Earth's atmosphere. The payload bay doors are closed. We'll have a kiss this morning. And Mission Control has been sending up messages keeping Columbia informed of weather conditions at Edwards Air Force Base, California. The weather looking good. Touchdown slated for 8.34 Houston time, just after sunrise in California, and the runway night lights are already turned on. There's one unit on each side of the uh, runway at the threshold, about 250 feet from the center line. It's uh, pointing down the runway to illuminate the uh, touchdown area. Uh, you may not notice it during the landing uh, since you'll be landing after sunrise. However, it, uh, you may see it as you're coming over with the uh, field onto a hack. During its plummet to Earth, the space shuttle Columbia will slow down from a speed two dozen times the speed of sound to a landing speed of about 190 miles per hour. KTR-8 will provide live coverage of the Columbia touchdown beginning at 8.30 this morning. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Wayne Bolchefino, KTR-8 News. Well, apparently we're having a problem with that right now. We'll get back to Wayne as soon as uh, he's ready or we've got the technical problem straightened out. An hour from now, Columbia's 6,000-pound orbital maneuvering rockets will fire, beginning what previous shuttle astronauts have described as the great toboggan ride home. The deorbit maneuver will drop Columbia 268 feet per second toward entry into Earth's fiery atmosphere and the eventual touchdown on concrete runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base in California at 8.34 a.m. Houston time. John Young, the man, one of the men who was on shuttle mission number one, who's been checking weather conditions during the past few flights, was up again this morning in the T-38 over Edwards, testing the conditions, and all is go. And the landing pad uh, for a touchdown at 195 knots looks like about 20, uh, we landed about 2,400 feet down the runway when you normalize it. Okay, we copy all that, John, and um, I guess uh, things are looking pretty good to you right now. You bet. Well, that word from John Young, the astronauts uh, all ready to go, the suitcase is packed, the door is closed, and now all that's left is that big ride home. KTRH will begin live coverage of Columbia's return home at 8.30 this morning. Live at the Johnson Space Center, Wayne Dolcefino, KTRH News. coming home. Draft registration law thrown out. Football strikers are still striking. New Kremlin leaders are getting down to work. Good morning. This is David Jackson in for Dallas Townsend with the CBS World News Roundup. Good morning, Columbia, Houston. Time to get up and brush your teeth and uh, take a shower. We want you to come back home today. And they'll be dropping in very shortly now. We get the latest from Reed Collins at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. At 36 minutes past the hour, Columbia's big engines will fire, slowing down the orbiting spaceship and beginning its long fall halfway around the world. Over Wake Island, Columbia will begin digging into the thin atmosphere 400,000 feet up. Nose up at a steep angle, it will dig in, surrounded by ions that black it out from all communications for 15 minutes. Finally, it will scream over the California coastline, over 100,000 feet up, at several times the speed of sound, but just nine minutes later, it should be approaching Edwards Air Force Base. What was an orbiting missile an hour before will be a gliding airplane headed for the runway. My my colleague, Judy Muller, is at Edwards now. The lake bed here at Edwards is still under a curtain of darkness. But when the sunrise provides the lighting for this vast desert setting, the shuttle will make its entrance, gliding in from the west, maneuvering, rolling, using the immense energy it picked up during the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Despite the darkness, the morning desert chill of 40 degrees, the audience is arriving, lining up along the lake bed, a considerable distance from the concrete runway where the Columbia will touch down. The forecast calls for clear skies, calm surface winds, but gustier winds aloft. There's an other world feeling about the desert before dawn, but very down-to-earth activities are going on. For example, the souvenir shop here at Edwards opened at 3 a.m. to accommodate the rush of spectators. Judy Muller, CBS News, Edwards Air Force Base, California.
There are plenty of them. The Air Force estimates that 75,000 people will be on hand today. There were more than 10 times more for the 4th of July touchdown.
back with you. Columbia now uh, a minute and 41 seconds away from entry into the Earth's atmosphere at approximately 400,000 feet. Committed now to uh, return to Earth after that good deorbit burn. Commander Vance Brin describing it as uh, on time and completely nominal. Columbia State Vector is good. There was no need to update that here at Guam. Houston, uh, 946, uh, this player so is Columbia and its crew of uh, four is uh, heading toward runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Roger, copy. Clouds at 19,000, then we're out at... Uh, touchdown clock five. says uh, 31 minutes, 40 seconds away from a touchdown on runway 2 And all the uh, nav aids are working good. The visibility is now starting to get where you can... Uh, we'll come in. back up and we're going at the YAOS and see if we do have any acquisition. Flight of Shuttle 5, I'm Reed Collins at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, where Mission Control is now monitoring the return of Columbia from its fifth space voyage. Four men aboard streaking across the Pacific now heading in toward California. Just 45 minutes back, 180 miles above the Indian Ocean, flying upside down and backwards, they fired the orbiting maneuver rockets that decelerated them by just about 187 miles an hour. But that was enough to send them smashing into the atmosphere, digging in like a shovel and headed home, inexorably home. In a matrix of flame and pressure, Columbia transformed herself from an orbiting missile to a winged airplane, which she is now, flying at still several times the speed of sound, but flying in toward the California coastline. Those wings headed, of course, for Edwards Air Force Base inland in California, where my colleague, correspondent Judy Muller, is standing by. Reed, the sun has made its appearance here on the lake bed at Edwards, and now we're, of course, waiting for the shuttle to make its appearance in about 10 minutes. They have, of course, uh, exited out of that communications blackout, and they are talking again to Houston, where you are. Soon, the long-range cameras, uh, NASA cameras, should pick up the shuttle, and we'll be looking for that. They're traveling about 8,270 miles per hour at this point and headed for the Santa Barbara Channel. And they'll hit that in just about a minute uh, and fly over the town of Isla Vista. So that is what we're waiting for. With hundreds of people here, hundreds, and this is the VIP section. Despite the fact that it's about 40 degrees, very chilly, uh, they came out here in the dark. Um, and there's more, hundreds more over in the public areas uh, away from us on the other side of the concrete runway, which of course is the target of the shuttle. Judy, they're telling us uh, she's still about 200 miles out, right on the ground track range. They're talking about the TACAN control now, the ground control. And Tactical air navigation system now being incorporated in Columbia. And that's something that eventually they may be able to use in orbit. The thing is very familiar to normal airline pilots. They use it a great deal themselves. Touchdown still several minutes away. Judy, I don't suppose you can see or hear it yet, but it's, it's hard to imagine that still at several times the speed of sound, she is approaching the very point where you stand. And coming in at an angle of descent that what's about, about 22 degrees, which is about seven times as steep as any commercial aircraft would, would roll in, uh, going very, very fast, of course. But at this point, essentially a glider, not really flying, but working on the energy, maneuvering, rolling, using that energy it picked up on the re-entry into the atmosphere and trying to make the best of it so that uh, they can 
approach the, the concrete runway just right. Uh, I understand there's some gusty winds aloft today, and at first uh, we wondered if that was going to be a problem. About 94 knots at 35,000 feet, but I understand that uh, since Commander Vance Brand will be taking over manually, uh, that that should not be a problem. I just heard that the Columbia is approaching the coast now. Um, at any rate, he will be able to control that manually and uh, steer it just so that it won't be a problem as he makes his turn into the runway. One of the difficulties was getting it out of orbit this far across range. That is, Edwards is considerably above the normal ground track, uh, which it has been following since its launch on Thursday. That means it had to use a lot of its cross-range capability in order to fly itself leftward, as you look at a map, in order to get far enough north to land where it did. One of the other things that a winged craft with, uh, with that sort of capability can do we're listening now. She's down to 100,000, about 100 miles from Edwards. Mission Control informing us all the time. Track very near the that track that the STS-4 flew. She's going over the town of Isla Vista, uh, and that town will hear the sonic boom a couple of minutes, of course, after the shuttle has passed, and by that time the shuttle will be over the Mojave Desert by the time the people hear the sonic boom in that little town on the coast. We'll, of course, be listening for the sonic boom here. It's always an exciting moment for the crowd, and I'm sure that we'll be able to hear the crowd cheer at that, at that time. Well, the men, just to explain what's going on up there now, you have Vance Brand in the left seat, the pilot seat, the commander's seat. You have the pilot, Robert Overmeyer, over on his right, centered, and just behind them is a new seat for the mission specialist. And getting to sit up there today is Joe Allen. Down in the mid-deck where he can't really see anything is Bill Lenore. Allen and Lenore were reversed on liftoff last Thursday. It was Lenore who got to watch the pilots at work and really got to look out the windows. Now it's Allen's turn to look out the windows as they come back to Earth and Bill Lenore's turn not to do very much of anything but sit down there. There's no ejection capability, no way to get out, which had been the normal means of egress in case of emergency before. So all the men are wearing anti-gravity suits, similar to those of test pilots. And they have a little air pack, a personal egress pack, they call it, which would enable them to get out of the craft once it's on the ground, should any emergency arise. But they're looking more and more like high-performance test pilots now, that the ejection seat has been abandoned and that the, uh, the high pressure pressure suits have been dispensed with. They're at 74,000 feet, two times the speed of sound right now. Uh, that would put them over the Mojave Desert, and they're still maneuvering, and the phase of managing their energy, it's called. The sunset is beautiful. What a setting to welcome home the first commercial mission. It's absolutely spectacular. At Mach 1.7, 70,000 feet. Still a little faster than the speed of sound, almost twice. You should get the boom out there in a couple of minutes, I would think, if you hear it at all. About two minutes to the boom here. Uh, gorgeous sunrise. Uh, spectacular setting, as I said before. The desert, the, the lake bed awash in pinks and yellows. Really, really pretty, reflecting on the San Gabriel Mountains, which are snow-capped across the way. You know, that big ridge out there to the east of you, the Lumen Ridge, they call it, is sort of a, a point. Yes, it's, it's and, very uh, prominent. And altimeter 2 niner, niner 5. Okay, we'll change up there. Judy, they just got an altimeter setting, just like any regular plane approaching a landing field. Far from being an ordinary plane, at 47,000 feet, which is, I gather, any moment, uh, Brand will take manual control, taking the shuttle out of autopilot. Mach 1 now. Just 51,000 feet, range 27 miles. Yes, just a couple of seconds here. He will take over. Right at, at the speed of sound coming right at you over the field. Is the We're sky overcast, Judy? We can see it on the television, of course. It's, it's inside on the television monitor. Uh, Long-range cameras have picked it up. Beautiful, looking great. Can't see it with the naked eye yet, but we're looking. There was a cloud cover over you earlier in the day. I there is. That's... It is. Just um, scattered clouds over us, and it, it could hurt a little bit in terms of seeing it come it in should... a distance. 
stood the above that first bank of clouds as it passes over. Because it certainly is uh, clouded over right now. Let's listen for the boom out there. It should be any second. There. Beautiful. Hear the crowd, hear the twin booms. Sometimes on radio, they're almost inaudible. They just kick everything off the, the concussion of it all. I think we heard that one. It's sort of like a creating its own dramatic drum roll as it enters enters its set here. All right, the roll of the return of the gladiators for the this time. <laughs> yes. As you said, uh, I, one of them, is it Bill Denor, who has no view? I wonder if he's regretting that. Uh, the, he was, well, I don't know, it would be a hard choice. Which do you want to see out the window, the launch or the return? Both exciting things to watch. Still looking, scanning the skies here, but I don't see it yet. Uh, an airspeed at 275 knots. 275 knots. Headed for Edwards Air Force Base in the Dry Lake Bridge. Actually, the concrete runway. Bobby Houston, you're looking real good on the hack. Beautiful on the cameras. Absolutely beautiful. Soaring, gliding just so effortlessly. That heading alignment circle is an imaginary circle. At an airspeed of 260 knots. That the computer imagines in its mind's eye and they fly around it. And he can see it on his CRT. Uh, the imaginary line is spelled out for them within the orbiter so that he can guide the craft along that imaginary line to make his turn. 14,000 feet. 14,000 feet. Show you right on the glide slope. We're looking as hard as we can, everybody. Raining. On the monitors in this Raining to see. Right on the glide slope. Should be over those ridges there. Should be able to see it soon. And we see it. And we see it. Absolutely beautiful. Coming in right now, just a dot reflected vaguely by the sun. Oh, it's so high. Coming in far over the desert. Aiming for the concrete runway. Chase plane, one chase plane this time. Coming in at a steep angle of descent. He's got to pull that nose up, of course. He's done that. The flare maneuvers, which pull the descent angle up from, he's gone from 20 degrees descent to 1.5. So that's quite an adjustment to make as he roars in past the sun, reflecting on it. Absolutely beautiful. Just as smooth as anything. Spacecraft becomes an aircraft. Coming in, coming in now, close to touchdown. Very close. Almost down. This beautiful sunrise setting and very close. Hear the crowd. Hear the crowd. That's it. Going down behind. The crowd here is unofficial touchdown. Unofficial touchdown. Beautiful. Mission Patrol, the crowd cheering, and just absolutely spectacular. Really, really a lovely landing, and that, of course. Touchdown time again. Five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Not exactly what they predicted. Five days, two hours, a little more, plus some change. Just very nice. I don't know. I don't think that these crowds will ever get tired of seeing this. I know it's the, the fifth shuttle, but it's just a spectacular thing to see. It was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. And repeating the theme that they've repeating the theme that they've been saying all along on this commercial mission, we deliver. Glad to be we're back. We're all the room here, and we're very happy to have all you guys home again. 
And of course now the crew will be securing the systems inside the shuttle. The ground crew is rolling up to service the shuttle and it'll be a while before they can actually get out. The sun now full, full blast over the horizon, washing the, the whole desert in this beautiful sunrise, almost on cue as it comes out of the clouds. Beautiful landing, Reed. Judy, thanks very much for your description of it, and beautiful it is, too. Hard to imagine that what weighed almost four and one-half million pounds last Thursday when it left the Cape at the other end of this nation now weighs just a little over 240,000 pounds as it sits out there over the glistening sun rising over the Lumen Ridge in the Mojave Desert. Stock still as white as white can be except for those scorched sides that the Columbia has known now five times the heat of reentry coming in, coming down, transforming itself from that orbiting missile into the shape and capacity of a winged plane. This time, of course, four men aboard, not the usual couple of men. And the pilot, Vance Brand, still over in the left seat, Robert Overmeyer, whose main task this time was to decide when the landing gear should come down. That's really about all he has to do except monitor controls. He punches a button and the gear come down. He confirms that it's down and locked. What they're calling nominal now, that's become a familiar phrase in the arcet of spacedom. Nominal this mission, except, of course, for the spacewalk, which was lost due to spacesuit malfunction yesterday. But Columbia is home and safe the fifth time. For Judy Muller at Edwards Air Force Base, I am Reed Collins, CBS News at the Johnson Space Center. at Edwards Air Force Base, California. It was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. Yes, sir, we deliver. Those were the words of mission specialist Joe Allen after a sunrise touchdown of the Columbia in the Mojave Desert. A slogan that's come to represent this first commercial mission of the space shuttle. It performed as a space truck delivering two satellites on consignment, but it returned like a majestic glider, soaring back through the atmosphere, riding over the California coast, announcing its arrival along the way with sonic booms, and then touched down at Edwards' concrete runway, five days, two hours, 14 minutes, and 25 seconds seconds after launch. Later, the crew will be flown back to Houston for a second welcome home. My colleague Frank Setapani will have more news after this. Frank Setapani. The crew of Space Shuttle Columbia, home after five days of success and some failure in space, is getting the customary medical checkup now. We get a report on the homecoming and the future of the shuttle program from Judy Muller at Edwards Air Force Base in California. With the sunrise lighting its way, the Columbia glided in for a perfect touchdown at Edwards Air Force Base, completing the first shuttle for hire mission for NASA. It returned to Earth some 15,000 pounds lighter, having delivered satellites into orbit for two paying customers. The crew undergoes a post-flight physical and addresses a crowd of VIPs. Then it will be back to Houston, where the work begins on finding out what went wrong with the equipment intended for use in the spacewalk that had to be canceled. As for the Columbia, it's time for a rest. It will be flown back to Kennedy Space Center for modifications and won't be used again for about a year. The next space flight, early in 1983, will mark the debut of the Challenger. Judy Muller, CBS News, Edwards Air Force Base, California. Inflation via and crew home from five days in space, men in machine in good shape, and Mission Commander Vance Brand pleased with the way it all went. I feel uh, gratitude for my outstanding crew. Uh, for one thing, uh, these guys are just super. Each guy knows his job, just could handle any problem, and we had some minor ones. Uh, I was lucky in that regard. The landing in the California desert today, smooth and on target. The mission highlight, the launching of two communication satellites, the lone sour note cancellation of a spacewalk because of faulty space suits. 
for safe landing for the Space Shuttle Columbia. KTRH's Wayne Dolcefino at the Johnson Space Center recaps the landing. About four and Columbia should be crossing the coastline right about now. The Space Shuttle broke through the reddish clouds above the California desert minutes after sunrise. It touched down on the threshold of runway 22, three seconds ahead of schedule. Unofficial touchdown time was five days, two hours, 14 minutes, 25 seconds. The landing was picture perfect, so smooth that astronauts Overmeyer, Brand, Lenore, and Allen thought they were still flying. Hey, uh, are we down now? That was, uh, are we on the ground? Absolutely. It was beautiful, and you certainly lived up to your motto this flight. Welcome home. Yes, sir. We deliver. Columbia did deliver a flawless performance, dropping two communication satellites, one American, one Canadian, into Earth orbit. The only disappointment on Mission 5, the spacesuits that didn't work. This is Doug Miller at the Johnson Space Center. Disappointment was voiced only once by the astronauts after they stepped off of Columbia. Joe Allen recalling three days ago in space when Commander Vance Brand remarked that all that was left was a spacewalk and a landing. Bill and I quickly responded and said, yes, we have an EVA and a landing, but if we have to make a choice, we want a safe landing. The crew even took time to thank the taxpayers. An estimated 55,000 of them turned out to greet the astronauts at Edwards. At around 2 o'clock this afternoon, a crowd NASA predicts at less than 1,000 is expected at Ellington Field for the homecoming in Houston. That's a far cry from the long-ago days when returning astronauts were ticker tape paraded through the streets. And that's the subject of a commentary from KTRH News Director Garvin Berry. There was a time when it was romantic to see motor cars on the streets of Houston. They were strange. Dogs barked at them, little boys chased them, and adults yelled, get a horse. Now there's nothing more routine. That's what's happening to the space shuttle program, and I think it's good. The shuttle is designed to be the utility truck of space. It wasn't useful until it quit being glamorous. Now it can go about the task of changing the face of civilization even more than the motor car did. If we use it properly, the shuttle is the opening wedge to the development of more energy and natural resources than we can ever imagine. Already, everything from the watch you wear and the food you eat to the care you receive in the hospital has been drastically improved by the space program. If you aren't aware of that, you're in the same posture as those Europeans who thought Columbus was crazy to waste time and money sailing into unknown seas. Garden Berry, KTRH News.